Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Threadripper third generation 3960X. Up to 4.5 gigahertz on 24 cores. Sounds like a dream come true really. And it does really go to show you quite how far AMD have come. Now the 24 core is actually their introductory Threadripper processor now, but I feel like I'm getting into the thick of the review already. So let's break into the intro before we get into the meaty bit. So into the meaty bits, and one of the things I do want to say straight from the get-go is I will put all the links underneath for you. You can go to the website to see all of the reviews for these boards. So we got the MSI Creator, the Zenith 2 Extreme, and the Aorus Extreme as well. So you can go and take a look at uh, all of those uh, if you are interested. With this CPU itself, there is an awful lot for us to talk about. But this is essentially now the uh, entry level Threadripper processor. So they now start at 24 cores. We did have a 16 core in the last one, but that's now gone down into the normal Ryzen stack with the 3950X. Now the 3950X is a bit of a hallowed processor and numbers on them are incredibly short. There really weren't very many for sale at all in the UK. I actually heard numbers of as little as 10 to be available for the public to purchase. But the 24 core on the Ryzen, it's a, it's a different kind of, um, it's completely different silicon. It's not like it's speed binned or anything like that. But 24 cores up to 4.5 gigahertz. One of the things I will say is because of the Windows um, core allocation now working better, as in prioritizing the cores, you'll see with the results in a minute that the, the it's really has made an awful lot of difference. So we've got extra core speed and we've now got windows not dancing around between the cores so much, meaning that you get a higher clock speed for a lot longer. And it has made a brilliant amount of difference. Now, if you're wondering what version of Windows that is, you should be on at least, I think it's 19.03. So just make sure your system is very up to date. Or if you are using like a USB, for example, to set your system up, uh, to install your system with one of these then just make sure you go and grab the very latest uh, version of it before you do it or if you have to make sure you do all of the updates first because it does make a lot of difference. Now 24 cores up to 4.5 gigahertz we're noticing around 3.8 gigahertz ish as an all core boost at stock. Um, and uh, you, with the AMDs of old, what we would have been then thinking about was like awful lots of like power draw and stuff like that. And I do have an awful lot of uh, results for us to talk about because this is mainly just the, the, the processor review, but it has done incredibly well. And by AMD standards, I would say wholeheartedly that I am very surprised. So for 24 cores at yeah, at 3.8 gigahertz, it was 413 watts from the wall, which is amazing. When you look at these graphs, you can see how much the old 2 series processors were pulling. So if you were to go to the 2950X, for example, you can see how many more watts. So just compare AMD to themselves at this point, and you can see how starkly different the power draw for these is. It's unbelievable. Yes, with the overclock, you can see that the power draw went up, but we, with the power draw, the overclock there was 4.3 gigahertz across all of the cores. So that's a static overclock. Now, that's uh, quite weird with that because obviously what we've ended up doing is taking a hit on the single core performance because you can actually get up to 4.5 on one core, but rather than it being 4.5 on one core, we've then got 4.3 across all of the cores, which means we actually get a 500 megahertz boost from the all core kind of place. So 500 megahertz is brilliant. Now, the reason why I'm kind of trying to stress this is because with say like the 39, uh, 3900X for example, we, we weren't getting such big boosts from the overclock. So with the AMDs, you are actually getting a very healthy increase in performance on heavily threaded tasks. 
Now, because of the um, power draw, which was quite light, I think a lot of the manufacturers got kind of like, not necessarily caught, but they were, were all kind of really um, happy about it because all of the VRMs on these boards are built to withstand uh, uh, just crazy amounts of power. You could easily put the 2990 WX on this and the, 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 they wouldn't struggle with any of the, the temps. But one thing I do need to stress is the TRX40 kind of platform is not backwardly compatible. You can only put a Threadripper third generation processor in these boards. So if you were thinking to yourself, I'm going to buy a Zenith 2 Extreme and use my old 2990 WX, sadly you can't do it, it just won't work. So you do need to get that uh, in mind. It's, this is not an upgrade platform, this is something to get and you have to buy it all from scratch. But these boards are so well specced, even though this is technically the CPU review, what I did want to do is just give you a little hint on the VRMs for these boards. And this was all on air, no special circumstances, no extra fans added or anything like that. Normal case with case fans at the top, not set to turbo speeds or anything like that. And these temperatures, as you can see, are just all like amazing, really. Even, I mean, for the hottest one with a massive overclock on it being 61 degrees, you know, it, it speaks for itself, really. Now, with the performance, one of the things I do want to say is, like I said, with the um, single core performance, uh, that's going to be great at stock. But then when we go to um, multiple core performance, what you technically then are doing is you do get the boost. Uh, but it's the single core when it's overclocked takes a little bit of a hit and you can see with the graphs and if you want to go and have a look at the website don't forget what I said you've got the CPU review live there we've got these three board reviews live over there as well and it's just something for you to take a look at but the really kind of surprising thing for me with this blender result is to you can see really how far AMD have come in one generation and Blender's a great way because it's not only is it um, very, very intensive, but there's a bit of AVX going on in the background as well. So it properly stresses the CPUs out. And what you can see is the 3960X at stock is quicker than the 2990WX at stock. And then uh, admittedly with the 2990WX, you once it's overclocked, it does a little bit better than the 3960X overclocked. But you need to remember the difference between the, um, the amount of cores there. You're doing 24 versus 32 cores. And at this point, it would have been nice if I had the 3970X in my graphs, but sadly I don't. Uh, I know some of you are also going to say, oh, you've not got the 3950X in your graphs. And that's plain and simple because I haven't had one yet. I am hoping to get my hands on one, but they're, they're just, AMD have been very, very low on samples, but they're very, very low on actual retail products as well. So I completely understand this. Um, it's just a shame that I, I don't have the numbers for it and I can't you know, go and take other people's numbers or anything like that. I will only ever put my results in my graphs. But on topic, the 3960X being there or thereabouts with a 2990WX, which has more cores, is insane. And this will be a combination of the fact of the, uh, the core prioritization with Windows, but also the fact that the clock speeds are being driven up as well. Because um, obviously you get single, uh, the, the low, you, at stock, you will be 3.8 running this, but then with our overclock, it's 4.3. Now, we were struggling to get 4 gigahertz running with the 2950 and the 2990 and the 2970 before. So this is all a massive step in the right direction. And it's also kind of proving the point that I always said all Ryzen really needed was a little bit more core speed. <laughs> to be able to just smash it out the park. And these numbers, you know, they, they flipping prove it. And the thing that you do need to also compare as well is the 3960X is $1,400. The 2990WX was $1,999, so $2,000 basically versus $1,400. So not only are we packing the same sort of performance, but it's now $600 cheaper effectively. 
The um, uh, Cine Bench, it just, especially the um, multi core, it did amazingly well. But the uh, single core stuff was relatively quite good as well, considering. Now, single is quite hard to get any decent sort of numbers out of it. But when you look at those, and it's kind of around the 9900K kind of point, even beating it a little bit more, the graphs obviously sorted in uh, multiple. Uh, but again, you can see with the multiple cores, it's managing to do it better than 2990 WX in both places there, which is astounding. Gaming, it didn't do too bad on either. Now, with gaming, obviously, uh, there was one there, I believe it was Metro Exodus, scanning really, really quickly to find it out. But it was the one that it was, I'd say there's probably some optimizations maybe needing within like uh, drivers and stuff. And with the with the gaming side of it, we were using a 2080 Ti as well. So we were probably, you know, been able to stress it. And that is 1080p results which with this sort of processor and that kind of graphics card, you're not really going to bother with, but it, it, it allows to show you any CPU limitations there. Um, and that's why the high frames per second and the fact that we've actually got decent AMD results mixing in with a lot of the uh, Intel results. I mean, you can see where the old Threadripper sat when it, came, when it was first launched versus where we are now. And it's, it, it's brilliant to be able to see the, the AMDs doing so well. Now, obviously, it's not a uh, gaming processor. It is pretty much a content creating processor, but because of those differences with the, the core speed and all that sort of stuff, it is going to mean that you can have a system that you could possibly do both with and have a, a system at home that you're going to be able to do your um, uh, 3D design or your CAD design or your, your massive amounts of video editing, and then at the end of the day, maybe just flick over, start Steam up, and start playing your games. Now, I've not really spoken about the uh, 10980XE much in this review, because the AMD is, uh, in reality, it's like 40% more expensive. Uh, also, I personally see the 10980XE being more kind of around the sort of ballpark competition-wise as the 3950X. So I don't really want to be doing any proper um, comparisons with those until I've actually managed to have a 3950X in my hand and I can have them in the graphs. I am trying to get, sort it out uh, and hopefully you'll, by the time you watch this video, you might be able to go and find it on the channel. But if not, I'm doing my best to try and get one. So that's why I've not kind of mentioned it in this because I, to be fair, apart from the gaming, the, the Threadripper is just leagues and leagues above it. And in reality, if you wanted to even get close to the amount of multi-threaded horsepower that the Threadripper has, you kind of need to be talking Xeon. And then when you are talking Xeon, the price is probably at least two, maybe even three times more expensive. And then the clock speed falls off with the Xeon as well. And when you get to that kind of point, you are very dedicated kind of server just going on about threads. And the Threadripper actually does it so much better. It's kind of a, a gray area in between sort of like high end desktop and server grade sort of stuff. And the Xeons are really taken care of by Epic. And Threadripper now sits in this ground in reality on its own, where it's decimating the X series processors, um, but you still get all of that content creator kind of edge with all of those extra cores. And it, it is, they're kind of forming their own kind of like area of the market now, because like I said, they're decimating X series and they're considerably cheaper than Xeon, yet they're being able to do things better than Xeon. So one of the graphs that I can bring up for you is Vegas. And this is, I use Sony Vegas uh, to do my videos with. Now, Sony Vegas actually likes clock speed. In reality, uh, just as much as it likes cores. And you can see that how strong the, uh, the Threadripper is. And, and that is somewhere where the Xeon for me personally, just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work at all. Um, but anyway, so absolutely outstanding product. It's a shame I only got to test the 60X. I'm hoping to do the 70X and also go back and do the 50X as well. But on the day of launch, I'm very, very like massively impressed 
with Threadripper, not only the clock speed, but obviously they've worked really hard with Windows, but also how little power it pulled as well. So yes, Threadripper, to get on Threadripper now, you have to spend a little bit more money, and it's definitely gonna be something out there for the hardcore users alone. But to be fair, AMD in, in a year, oh my days, it's amazing. Thoroughly, thoroughly love it. I'm just gonna end up going round and round in circles saying all nice things. But that's all I have to say about the 3960X is nice things over and over again.